everyone. Thank you for hanging out. Good to see you again. Hopefully this isn't your first one and that again thus makes sense. Um, thanks for hanging out today. We're going to do a lesson on, you guessed it, Twitch. Um, and we're going to go ahead and start with, uh, or review a game uh, that I did a little bit poorly on. I did, I, the scoreline looks okay. Don't let the scoreline deceive you on this game. Um, I think we actually could have done a lot better at the start of the game during the laning phase. I think at the end of the day, our itemization wound up being all right. Uh, trying to go towards the Bork. Bork is still pretty strong right now. And trying to give myself a little bit additional sustain um, is good. Kassadin has some HP. There's some HP coming out of um, the support here in the Rakan. So it's not the worst, not the best here. Maybe I could have gone GA second item. Already having a little bit of armor coming out of the Ninja Tabby makes me feel eh about getting a third item GA. But maybe that could have resed me in a critical fight and we could have cleaned up a little additional kills. From what I recall, this was a very scrappy closeout. So I want to review this and see what we could have done better this game. See what we could have done to impact the game again. I know early game I definitely could have uh, had some better presence during the lane. What a white screen to death there <laughs> for a second. It doesn't look like that showed up on stream though. Um, And hopefully you guys can see that all right. Um, but so I think we're going to be looking for how to play out the early game a little bit better. Because I've been, I, when I've been playing Twitch, I keep sort of falling into this funk of just letting myself um, play very passive. Let them push in and try and just farm, 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 farm until I hit my IE rune on spike. And that does seem to work pretty well, because that's one heck of a spike. But at the same time, like it would be nice if I could have a little bit of more presence during that laning phase. And if this replay wants to load, we can get into the lesson for today. We'll see here. Oh boy. I think we've been bug splat. Okay, no, we made it. We made it! Hooray! <laughs> um, going into a... Um, going into a lane as Kogma, I generally feel like I struggle with safely last hitting because I, I'm so short range compared to some of the other ADCs. And I'm so immobile. Like, I, I have good mobility in that I can stealth bomb into th a fight. But once I'm in a fight, I don't really have much mobility. My mobility from my Q is basically just an attack speed steroid that I'm popping during the midst of a fight. Um, so we'll see what we can what we can take from this one. I remember it was a pretty uneventful early game. Oops, we meant to click on Twitch here. Oops, that's red side, there we go. I was like, that doesn't make sense. Why can't I see myself? Okay, so since Ivern was doing a um, bit more aggressive of a start, here, we'll actually drop the speed a little bit. Um, since he was doing the sort of aggressive try and steal the red buff with first might start, he dropped a control ward on his red, which allowed us to keep eyes out for an early invade. But we had a really early level 2 gank come out. And I think actually that flash probably probably was necessary at that exact point. I, I maybe could have flashed just immediately over them, but I think juking a bit like that is fine. Since I start E and I don't have my Q, I have to use my flash there as my only main tool. This is a little tough getting hit by that Rakan knockout. So far, I think we're positioning okay. With Rakan dipping in and out of the bush, I'm slowly seeding the ground. And again, you're starting to see me falling back. And right here, I just instantly go in. Do still have the heal available for Sona. So, so far, we're actually okay in this fight. And we do have, uh, coming in for the assist, is our good buddy, 
Ivern out of the jungle. We're able to fend off a gank coming in to answer that. I think we actually just spend too much time here with Ivern. So I'm not able to really make a play happen. Yeah, instead the play happens mid, which is unfortunate. I start to look to Stealth Bomb in to compensate for that, but I'm not really able to find anything, so I just wind up catching the farm, which is eh, whatever. It's nice that somebody's catching the golden XP, but it allows them to push bot. Which again, I, I just sort of readily let myself get pushed in like that. So I can try and catch as much um, farm as possible. And still have like, still have a lane that's safe because it's pushed in. But I'm not sure getting pushed in like this is the best. And upon seeing that nobody's in the brush, we still have to go in on him. We're actually having a little bit of choppiness. I don't know if that's coming through on the stream for you guys. Yeah. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, just pause for a moment and take down Midori here. Fortunately, the replays in the client just don't like when Midori's here. Yeah, there we go. Much better. Um, so Lucian coming back there. There was a good engage from the Rakan. I'm trying to look for more macro elements though. So I want to say I feel like this is something that happens at every game. It's not really a this laning matchup was tough, which it actually isn't that tough of a laning matchup. Once I back and get BF, it's really a lot easier for me to last hit. So far, I was keeping up in farm. It's me. <laughs> but I haven't really been controlling the bot side at all. And the real cost of that is we lose control of Drake. Which, luckily, they haven't capitalized on this uh, on yet at this point in the game. But keeping us shoved in like that means we can only really ever reward Tri-Brush. And it's a nice stealth from out of vision. I do have to flash to finish him there. Um, I think I couldn't have positioned much better than that, so I think the flash was necessary. Probably could have got Rakan there if I would thrown in an additional auto. Maybe I could have gotten two more, whoops, could have gotten two more autos out of that. I actually stay here, since I see the fights breaking out, I want to create pressure. Then I leave as soon as they dip out of vision. And then I just back to base. And again, this is the lack of vision control coming out of bot side is because I've seeded pressure so hard in the lane. Like, we have no idea where they're at in the jungle or if they're on the drake. And sure enough, they take the drake because it's an important one. But then I go right back to seeding control of the lane. Well, on this one, since he's low, I actually try and all in the Rakan. Doesn't quite work out. And in fact, we almost died Lucian on the backside of it, but he made that work all right. And I was a little slow to go in on this, I think. Good play by them to safely get out of that with a flash and try and zone away properly from Ivern from the slow on Trigger Seed, but. I think I'm a little sluggish on coming in with the Qs. And again, I think, honestly, I don't know that there's a lot of, like, oh man, well, I'm not there for that. That's too bad. Um, I don't think that there's necessarily, once I'm in this position, a lot of misplays I'm making with the macro game. But I think just defaulting to a very passive like, seeded control lane is not good. And I'm not, like, Nasus out of control late game. I get really strong late game, but I don't get so out of control. 
I'm glad I'm being a little bit more proactive on the map here, trying to stealth in and find opportunities to fight people off. And I do just barely get the E off on him, so that's good. But I just think, I don't know, man. Because again, they're pushing into the turret, and the turret's already taken a good amount of ambient damage because it's been pushed in a couple times. And they're able to secure the first turret. And first brick, it's not that uh, out of control as it used to be, but it definitely still makes quite a big difference. I'm going to try and shove here, but again, because we had so little control before I left to go mid, like the wave isn't even going to make it in time. So all we wind up getting here is damage. We don't even wind up taking down the turret. I shove out the next wave, but they're here to catch it, so... At least I thought they were here. Yeah, Lucian showed. So I go grab red, that's fine. I'm actually not sure if you're supposed to let the mid pick up red or not. I know Ori can actually use red really well, but... Um, she might not have gone for it just because she's not feeling it this game. She's a little bit behind already. Maybe seeing this scoreline, I should have gone for... Well, no, because Lucian's pushing it in again, so I have to be bought. Now that this has happened, I think being pinned bot is understandable. But I was basically pinning myself as far away from their turret as possible, which makes this scenario all the more likely, and then we lose control of the Drake Pit, which we haven't had all game. We haven't even necessarily had control of our red buff. Being fairly proactive on the map. Rotating over to mid, and bots pushing. I was a little slow on opening up for the ultimate there. I think with some ults, I just need to ult in unison with her. Best ult or not. And perhaps I value my ult before I have runons a little too highly. Once I have runons, I really want to make sure I'm in the middle of everybody. But I should just like open up with ult to fight whenever I fight. I think I'm saving that cooldown too much, because sure the cooldown like could have been up for an engagement here, but I blew it anyway. Because it eventually was good enough. So I should just open with it. And either dissuade them from getting as much damage as they could have down. Uh, that was a good charm. I actually can't make it out of there because there's just too many flashes. Yeah. And like, you know, our lane isn't the one that's the problem, so it's not that we played this super bad and like our Lucian got out of control. Maybe it's not so bad that we're freezing lane that hard, because Lucian is kept down. It does mean that we lost control of Drake. And giving like our jungler no way to go bot if he looks for bot is probably not ideal. I mean, letting them push in means that it should be an easier gank because they're already, like, in the danger zone pushed towards us. And it does mean once I get some items, I can start farming out these crugs, which is nice. We don't really have control of the map though. I could be contributing more to that. Because um, I don't think I, I don't think that's my control word I just walked by. So maybe I could be buying control words more quickly. I try and always pick up a control word if I have a slot for it and I have the gold, which usually I do. I could have found a better opportunity to ult there. That time I might have saved it and been better off, but I think it's just because I was feeling the pressure from uh, all these minions being mid. And I'm a little slow to rotate back to that fight once they go in. Maybe rotating back in would be a little bit, a little bit better once I knew the fight was going to break out. Yeah. Blue team's turret has been 
destroyed. Mm. And again, I think the Ninja Tabby, which is my main itemization point at this point in the game, is just so effective because it's a Lucian Graves Quinn. But I just can't not pick that up. And maybe we could have tried to make a different play to go get Jumbo while they were on group, but that's out of my control, you know? I want to focus on things I can control on here. Or uh, control over, rather. Alright, let's actually review that fight. So I think I had poor position. Come on. Go back! <laughs> So this is a really good ultimate, and I flash so I can open up with my ult. Then my flash is down. I'm kind of in the thick of things. I guess it's fine. I was able to miss out on the Greaves ult, and I, I throw that scry on top of myself just so I can get some vision. Yeah, that was a bit chaotic. I tried to flash into the, get my damage down while I could. So I'm not sure that that was necessarily done poorly by me. I think that was just pretty chaotic. Um, shove it out mid so we can rotate to Baron. And I grab mid turret before backing off since it was very low. But unfortunately, we do lose two on the way. So then they just all mid. We lose our inhibs again, which is really bad. Um, I'm hanging mid a little long here. Maybe I could rotate to that fight a little bit quicker. I think with, with that I go for, like, okay, let's just... Let's just go for this Drake, or this Baron rather. Can't quite get it in time. Let's try and make a play there. Can't quite make it work. We wind up picking off Graves, but at the end of the day, Quinn was still pushing. We had two down in him, so the Winions were too strong with her. You know, here's what I think needs to be done. Because telling from that is not immediately obvious. Um, usually we can watch a game and be like, oh, I did this wrong, I did that wrong. But I have a particular eye geared to general mistakes. And we're a little slow in rotating to fights. We're probably still prioritizing minions a little bit too much. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm gonna do some more research, is what I'm going to do. And I think this is actually probably the important lesson <laughs> of the day. Watching that replay and being like, huh, you know, I'm not... I'm not really sure what I'm doing wrong. But again, the thing that's immediately jumping out at me is in in my laning phase, I'm really seeding pressure. I'm letting them pressure me. And I don't know that that's right. I don't know that that's right. It feels okay because it sets up ganks to path very optimally for our jungler. But we can't get vision down looking at bot side. That whole time, the map was just black. And, like, we lose our outer turret very quickly because we're taking a lot of ambient minion damage because almost every wave is crashing in. Um, and we don't have good control over Drake Pit. You know, all that matters. All that matters quite a bit. And I don't know that that's worth saying, all right, I'm going to play a little bit passive. I'm just going to take the safe route. And I'm just going to farm up and try to hit my spikes. I think I need to be more proactive in the lane. And I think I need to... Like, actually contest controlling the wave at a place that I want, which is off my turret. I, I might want it near my turret, but certainly I want it off my turret. Um, so there's two ways I'm going to research this. One, I think next episode we're going to play a lot of Norms games where I try and be very aggressive on Twitch in lane and just accept that I might do horrible. <laughs> but, number two, I'm also going to look up some other players who play ADC. And I'm going to watch them. I'm going to try and find times when they've played Twitch recently. And I'm going to try and watch them and see how they play Twitch. Uh, at least during the laning phase in particular. 
And I'm going to see what they do. I'm going to see how they farm differently. I'm going to see how they look for trades differently. I'm going to try and absorb some of that in. Hopefully that will be helpful. <laughs> Creamy crimes <laughs> jumping in right at the very end of the show. Thanks for hopping in, my man. Um, but so, so I think that's the lesson of today. It's less of like look at this mechanical thing, and it's what to do when you watch a replay and you feel like you know I'm not I'm just not really sure what the main mistake is. I have a hunch, but I don't know that that's wrong, and I don't know how I could do it better. What what you do in those situations you, when you have the more research is needed, you research, and it, and it's important to be able to identify those times, um, and be able to like know what to do in those situations. Again, like there's plenty of streamers that are like really good, like take all the pro ADC streamers or pro ADC players. I can look up any of their streams, look for one that has Twitch recently, watch a couple of those games, see how they play the lightning phase differently for me. Um, see how they manage poison stacks, see how they look for trades and see what happens in different matchups. Some matchups, if it's a Leona Draven like we faced today, probably they're gonna play that similar to how I was playing um, I would imagine, but I might be wrong. So we're going to do some research. We're going to look into that. We're going to see what we can do, see if we can improve our laning phase and give our team a little bit more space to control the Drake area, to control the bot side of the map, to make plays bot. Again, it's one thing to let them push in when we know uh, junglers in our half of the map. It's another thing to just let them auto push. And that just gets too much damage down. We're losing ground on the first, uh, uh, first brick goal. It's just too much. It's too much, I think. But I don't know. I gotta watch some Twitch games and find out. I will have the answer for you guys next episode. Thanks for watching. If you guys know somebody who could stand to do a little bit more research on their role, that sounds kind of mean when I say it that way. But from what I'm doing, they're struggling with. They don't really know how to improve. Maybe send them this and vicariously as they watch me here, kind of struggle and be like, "Yeah, I don't know if that's right. I think this was okay. Maybe they'll kind of feel that same way and." Uh, uh, come to the same conclusion as me of trying to need to do some more research. And if you were that person who watched this episode and is excited to go out and do some research on whatever your champion is, Twitch or otherwise, great, I'm glad this was helpful. <laughs> Feel free to stay tuned and we will have some more lessons coming out that will hopefully also be helpful for you in the future. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.